Is a veteran service officer really necessary for my VA claim? Veteran service officer, the acronym is VSO. You may have heard that term. Uh, these are organizations like AMVETS, VFW. There's a bunch more. And they've been in place helping veterans for years. Didn't really help me out too much. And I'm going to, you know, this is a decision that you're going to have to make on your own. I want to give you a couple things to think about when you're deciding, you know, should I do it myself or should I get a VSO involved? One thing I could tell you for sure, it's really hit or miss out there. There are good VSOs and there are bad VSOs. And unfortunately, you can't call them up and say, hey, man, are you a good VSO or are you a bad VSO and, and move on to the next guy? You don't know if they're good or bad until you've already signed over a power of attorney, which basically lets them do whatever they want in your claim. And the claim's already moving. You know, this is a six month process. So you have somebody else doing this work for you. And if they do a bad job, they can really hurt your claim. And then the flip side to that is a good VSO can actually be helpful. But you have to figure out, you know, what your expectation is and what you think they should be doing and have a talk with them before you hire them and, and be, just be straight up. I'm going to need you to do these three things. Check on a few things for me. Basically, I've got this. Or, you know, maybe you don't know anything and you want them to do it all for you. Um, I wouldn't go that route. It's best to do your uh, VA claim stuff yourself. If you want to learn more about the VA claims process, check out my boot camp. There's a link in the description at combatcraig.com. You're going to care about your VA claim more than anybody else, right? The benefits, the, the money, all the different benefits, they affect you and your pocket, right? They don't affect anybody else. So you're always going to be your best advocate. That's first and foremost, the thing that you should be thinking about. And then when you're dealing with the VSO, like, you know, this is your claim and you want to maximize your benefits. You don't care about what the other veteran has or, you know, what a workload is. You just focused, laser focused on your claim, maximizing your benefits. So when you get a VSO involved, you know, depending on the workload, right, these are big, gigantic national organizations you know, you may be in Kentucky or something like that, and you get old Steve at VFW to help you out. Well, Steve may be having a, a bad time in his life, and he may have 250 veterans that he's dealing with. So he needs to use time management, and you're only going to get a small sliver of time. So you're not getting his best effort, you know. He's, he's spread thin, and he's going to do this, that, and the other thing. And um, I'll just tell you right now, He's uh, he, he doesn't have your claim only in mind. That's the main reason why I think you should, um, you know, educate yourself, file a claim yourself, educate yourself about medical evidence. And, you know, that's basically how I would go with this. VA claims come down to medical evidence. You're going to need a current diagnosis, current symptoms, and a nexus. If your doctor won't provide that for you, Check out my med team. There's an email address in the description. They can help you with your missing medical evidence. When you sign up with a veteran service officer, the first thing they do is have you fill out a power of attorney, which means they have the power to do whatever they want to do on your behalf because you signed over a power of attorney. So I don't like this because you could talk to your VSO, you could map out a strategy and then he could do something completely different, and it happens all the time. I don't like that. You know, this is my claim, my benefits. I care about this. I don't want somebody that, you know, is giving me a little bit of attention because, you know, I'm number whatever, 197 out of 200 clients, and you just kind of spin the wheels, do a little bit here, do a little bit there. Uh, I don't have time to call old combat Craig, so I'm just going to do this for him and not check even though we uh, already have a game plan mapped out. I don't like the power of attorney part. And that's just, you know, another thing you have to keep in mind. VSOs go rogue. Not all the time bad, but they do things on your behalf. If there's communication issues or something like that, I think it'll be better for Combat Craig if I do this. 
This is something that these, these are decisions you want to be involved with because once you hit the submit button on your claim, your, your move is over. You have to wait for the VA to send you to CNP exams, adjudicate your claim, and make a decision. Then you're like, oh, wow, I didn't use medical evidence or whatever. I didn't even have a disability. Just, just threw some things up against the wall. I've had bad experiences with VSOs, and for sure, I'm engaged with my claim because it's my claim, it's my money, and I'm going to be dealing with this for the rest of my life. VSOs come and go, right? You, you, you hire one, maybe he helps a little bit, maybe he does it, but for sure in five years from now, he's probably not even going to be working there anymore. You know, we're going to be living till we're eight in our 80s, hopefully, or, or longer, right? That guy's not going to be there. So if you're the common thread versus random VSOs, um, kind of piecemealing your claim together throughout the years, if you're the common thread, you know what's going on. It's huge. It's best for you to be involved in your own claim and be driving this ship. If you need a VSO to help you with paperwork, cool. Tell them, hey, I just need you to help me file a claim or look over things before I file them. I'll worry about getting my medical evidence together. I've researched all my stuff. I have all my diagnostic codes. The VSO isn't going to get too into the weeds on that stuff. If you want to learn more about the VA claims process, check out my boot camp. There's a link in the description at combatcraig.com. You don't need a VSO to help you with your VA claim. You need to identify high value claims that you can file that actually pay, and you need a doctor. That's the most important, you know, helper, if you will, that you're going to need. You don't need a lawyer. You don't need to think about lawyering up. You don't need a VSO. You don't need a secretary. You need to figure out, cool, I'm going to file a claim for two or three disabilities, and you need a doctor to back up what you're saying. Nexus, symptoms, have them fill out a DBQ, all that kind of stuff. That is the most important helper that you need, and you don't need anybody else. This is going to be work. You're going to have to learn how the VA works in general, how the process is, the difference between the Veterans Benefits Administration and the Veterans Health Administration. There's a lot to learn, but it's fine. There's no hurry. Open up an intent to file. I'll give you a year to gather your medical evidence and educate yourself. You are definitely going to have to roll your sleeves up and figure this out. But once you get over the first hurdle, then you'll understand how this whole thing works. You'll be able to understand decision letters, what to do if you don't like the decision, appealing effective dates, you name it. The more you're involved in your benefits and your claim, the better you're going to do in the long run. VA claims come down to medical evidence. You're going to need a current diagnosis, current symptoms, and a nexus. If your doctor won't provide that for you, Check out my med team. There's an email address in the description. They can help you with your missing medical evidence.